Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to take a break today from your usual programming, and we're going to talk about an article that I found today uh, having to do with synthetic biology, the, the technology that is coming into being uh, where we are now uh, using DNA-based pairs to synthesize artificial biology. And by artificial, I mean biology that has never been seen on the planet Earth before, that has never been formulated by the long process of evolutionary mutation. Uh, so very interesting stuff, but I do want to talk about the ramifications of this technology and uh, what it will mean for us possibly going into the future. Also, I think this is an excellent example of why at times certain industries do in fact need to be regulated, uh, regulated by an external force, perhaps even a governmental force. And, and, and you're going to see why I say that in a second. So I'm going to read to you a bit from the article and I'll start right now. This is an article that's going to be in the description box and it's titled Regulating Synthetic Biology Does Freedom of Speech Apply to DNA Letters? And the most interesting bits in the, in the article read as follows. It says, TechDirt has written often enough about applications of DNA sequencing, the elucidation of the four chemical letters A, C, G, T that go to make up genomes. But things have moved on. The new frontier is not just analyzing DNA, but synthesizing it. A fascinating article on SFGate describes the activities of one company working in this area, Cambrian Genomics, and some of the tricky ethical issues it raises. And it says, quote, In Austin Hines' vision of the future, customers tinker with the genetic codes of plants and animals and even design new creatures on a computer. Then, his startup, Cambrian Genomics, prints that DNA quickly, accurately, and cheaply. Anyone in the world that has a few dollars can make a creature, and that changes the game, Heinz said, and that creates a whole new world. The 31-year-old CEO has a deadpan demeanor that can be hard to read, but he is not kidding. In a makeshift laboratory in San Francisco, his synthetic biology company uses lasers to create custom DNA for major pharmaceutical companies. Its mission, to democratize creation with minimal to no regulation frightens bioethicists as deeply as it thrills Silicon Valley venture capitalists. Printing the new DNA is the easy bit. Increasingly, the hard bit is deciding what should and shouldn't be printed. Right now, employees check each order to make sure that the customer isn't printing, say, base pairs of Ebola, but staff won't have the time to do that if, as Heinz predicts, orders dramatically increase in the next two years. In that case, he said Cambrian might first ship the plates to an independent facility where experts would put the DNA inside cells, film and analyze it, and make sure that it is safe before releasing it. This facility, he envisions, could be run by another company, not necessarily the government, because Cambrian wants to keep government interference to an absolute minimum. Its CEO insists that behaving well is in the company's best interest. So, essentially, just trust us. Just trust us to not manufacture the next uh, pandemic, the next super virus, uh, or what have you. And so uh, I am 100% for technological advancement, and I think this is an excellent development, technologically speaking, and I think there's a lot of potential behind this, right? Think of the vast possibilities that are now open uh, to us as, as a species. We are now shaping and molding life itself. So incredibly interesting times and incredibly interesting technology we're talking about here. Right. Imagine the possibilities. We could now uh, create bacteria that builds human organs, uh, just hypothetically speaking. I mean, I don't know the ramifications or the specifics of that, but at least it sounds feasible now. And a whole other a whole new world really is opening up uh, with the development of these technologies. Great. Uh, excellent. Let's pursue this. Uh, let's see where it goes. But with that said, uh, as much as I talk about these subjects, things that kind of border on uh, transhumanism and and the like as much as i talk about these things i am very much so a bioethicist i am very much so uh someone who likes to reside on the side of caution uh instead of just reckless wanton abandon when dealing with these things i mean we are talking about uh genomes that nature has took eons to produce uh, and we're producing these things just willy-nilly without really the, the type of command of genetics that we should have uh, in, in scientific labs, not really knowing what's going to happen, 
this can be extremely destructive. And so, so, yes, I do believe that there should be some kind of regulatory agency of some sort controlling uh, the types of life that we bring into existence. Uh, for lack of a better word, we're playing God to a degree here. And uh, I think that we have the, the ability to develop this technology, but we don't have very much a very tight grasp on the ramifications of what could happen if we develop some as of yet unknown to nature virus that that is capable of wiping out the human race, the human species. So, uh, yeah, this is very interesting, but uh, I am a hardcore bioethicist, and I think that we need to understand the ramifications of what could possibly possibly happen if we pursue a technology like this. Uh, so, interesting times, and these people are talking about agencies that are charged with <laughs> charged with not um, not putting out some super virus out there and making sure you're not manufacturing base pairs of Ebola right so a commercial agency tasked with making sure that they don't manufacture some super weapon some super virus or, or what have you that I think is just a recipe for a disaster and 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 is the the danger still there with a regulatory agency perhaps a governmental regulatory agency of course it is of course it is but something somewhere is going to have to provide uh, some kind of legal framework to make sure that these these guys just don't run away with this stuff um, and and create something catastrophic. So that's all I got to say for now on this. Thanks for listening.